And what is up, everybody? It is The Beast. Welcome back to the channel, The Beast On. If you see this face, if you hear this voice, please subscribe to the channel. Let's get more uh, eyes on the channel. Share, uh, watch, um, and make sure you hit, there's a little thumb down there. Hit that thumbs up. It tells Google, hey, people are watching. Let's show it to more people. Let's show it to more people. And you can hit the little bell down there if you want to be notified when more videos are out. I owe you guys this video. Why? Because um, when it looked like there wouldn't be many changes on the defensive coaching staff, I put out a video basically ripping the hell out of Manny Diaz for not firing Blake Baker and for not making changes on the defensive coaching staff. And now I'm walking around with my tail between my legs because Manny made all the changes, right? So here we are. Now you're wondering, why am I uh, sitting uh, amongst the, mount the snowy mountains? And that's because here in Florida, in South Florida, it's gotten down to the 40s. So we are feeling like it's frigid. So I'm just, um, you know, this is what it's like in my backyard here in South Florida. This is, at least in my head, this is what it's like in my backyard here in Florida. It's, it's snowy or not. It's filled with palm trees and, uh, you know, the Boston me would uh, slap the uh, South Florida me for uh, feeling cold when it's only down in the 40s. Back up north, I would be wearing shorts and weather like this. I digress. Let's talk about the moves that Manny Diaz has made on this defensive coaching staff. And it starts with the move he made with himself. And he came right out. I watched the whole press conference. Uh, he came right out and said, I am in charge of this defense. I am calling the plays. It is my defense. Let's go. And applause. 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 Uh, I think... Um, we, we've talked about this over the, the two years that Manny has been in charge of this team um, when the defense has faltered. Like, it's Manny's defense. Why doesn't he just call it? Or is he the one game planning? Or is it Blake? Or what's going on with how much involvement Manny Diaz has with the defense? And why doesn't he just step in? And now all of that can go away because this is his unit. Hey, <laughs> I said unit. Ah, I'm such a five-year-old. Um, so, yeah, Manny Diaz has decided to take over the defense, and he explained on the Zoom call with the media that basically, uh, you know, even though he would be in charge of the defense, he would uh, definitely have the, the, the structure to delegate with the rest of the team to make sure that he knew what was going on with all aspects of his football team besides just the defense to make him uh, to make the players feel like they were loved no matter what position group they were in, even though Manny was coaching the defense. So I think he has a plan. Um, and this is the one thing that I think ha is a tie that you see with Manny Diaz is he has a plan. Last year it was to get the offense straightened out, and he did. Uh, this year, it's to get the defense straightened out, and it looks like he's going to. So, uh, that's the big, you know, the number one, the most important thing is that this is the Manny Diaz defense, the defense we saw under Mark Richt, hopefully, uh, that was stifling. That was just stifling, and one of the best in the nation. So, let's hope that we see that defense. And now, as for the assistants, let's, let's go through them. Jess Simpson comes back to Miami after a couple of years serving as a defensive line coach up in Atlanta with the Falcons. And I thought he was an unbelievable coach when he was here the first time. Um, and having been uh, spent time in the NFL can only help. Um, and I think it's going to help motivate his guys, really. They're playing for an NFL-type uh, assistant coach. They know that if they do what he says – uh, that'll lead them to the next level. Um, I think Jess Simpson, getting him back is a real stroke of luck for Manny Diaz and this defensive coaching staff. So uh, welcome back uh, to the full Jess Simpson. Um, and then, you know, Pat Key stays as special teams coordinator and uh, strikers coach. But uh, I, I think... I think Packy's role more will be, yes, to, to coordinate 
special teams, have some involvement on the defense, um, kind of be a utility guy, and also to recruit. So I think that's that's where his role is. Um, I'm I'm kind of I don't know how to feel about Packy being back. To be honest with you, I was a big uh, fan of his and him getting promoted to the coaching staff. I'm not sure what success um, he has or hasn't had. I mean, obviously he coached uh, two amazing specialists last year. Um, with Borigales and why did I do that? I don't know. And Headley, but you know, let let's be honest. The the thing with the, the specialist um, is you know Packy's not showing Borigales how to kick or Headley how to punt. Um, those guys learn those trades in you know kicking school, punting school with private coaches and all that stuff. He's mainly putting in, uh, you know, the, the scheme, the blocking schemes on specialists or the return schemes and all that stuff. But, you know, we'll give him the feather in his cap for coaching two All-Americans and we'll see what he does as a defensive coach. I, 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 to me, the book is not written on Jonathan Patkey as far as um, what kind of coach he is or will be yet. Um, and then he brings in Travis Williams from, from Auburn. Um, a guy that's very well respected around the country as a linebackers coach. Um, and I think the good thing about Travis Williams is I think he has that balance from what I heard of being a great recruiter and a great coach. And, you know, I was, uh, I was, as we would say in Yiddish, Kfeling Nachas. Uh, look that up and try to spell it. Um, I was really excited, basically, is what I'm saying, when he was started talking about that this is linebacker U. He made all the guys go up to the board and write down every great linebacker that's played at the University of Miami. Um, and uh, I think that shows the respect that he has for the University of Miami's history, but also what he wants his guys to be. Um, I think the kids love him. He raps. Um, and he has shown to be one of the better assistant coaches in the SEC so that Miami got him was, um, I think, really great. And I think he's going to be a great addition to the staff. Hopefully he can help this linebacking core grow to um, whatever it can achieve and help bring in some of those great South Florida talented uh, linebackers that we know this squad needs. Um, without, without a doubt. Um, and then we move, we move into the, uh, defensive backfield and we have, uh, T Rob, Travaris Robinson, um, coaching, uh, the safeties. Uh, but I'll get into this in a second. Coaching the safeties and another guy that's well known, obviously a South Florida guy, a guy that basically came out on the call and said, I should have come to Miami, um, when, I was coming out of Coral Park, um, but I didn't. I went to Auburn, and I think, you know, and he said it correctly. He said, you know what? I didn't know what was down the street as far as the college goes. Like, I knew about Miami football, but I didn't realize how beautiful the campus it was, how good of a school it was. I just didn't know, and that's on me, and I should have come here, but now I'm back here to coach, and I'm ready to go. Um, and he's got, he's got some decent players. Um, you know, we found out Amari Cooper is coming back. Hopefully, uh, hopefully T Rob can, can t teach Amari Cooper how not to, uh, get ejected from games. I'm having some allergy issues. So I apologize for that. Um, and then we have Demarcus Van Dyke has been promoted. It's kind of been a switcheroo. So basically they took Demarcus Van Dyke off the, uh, you know, recruiter guy that shows dudes around campus, making calls, studying, recruiting film, that sort of situation. Uh, he was doing that and they promoted him to coaching cornerbacks, which he was one of the greats at the U. And they took Mike Rumpf that was coaching cornerbacks and put him in to that uh, position that Demarcus Van Dyke was, uh, was doing. And Manny basically called out Mike Rumpf on the, uh, on the press conference, basically saying, listen, uh, 
DeMarcus is a better recruiter when it comes to going to close. He called DeMarcus a closer. It kind of inferring that Mike Rumpf wasn't. And I think we've we've seen that in in the recruiting battles. And um I and I don't want to take away from DeMarcus Van Dyke as an X's and O's coach. He certainly knows that position. But to me, um, this, this is and, – and this, and this happens. I'll get into this in just – there's a couple of things I want to get into. But to me, this is all about recruiting. You – if – you, the rules that govern recruiting um, say that only coaches that coach – you know, that are position coaches, assistant coaches, actual coaches can do a lot of the things that are involved in recruiting, whether it's, you know, making trips, all that stuff. Um, So by elevating DeMarcus Van Dyke, it gives him the opportunity to do more in recruiting to be that closer that he couldn't do as an off the field assistant as opposed to an on the field assistant. So um, this is about recruiting. And if I had to read the room, I don't know anything. I'm going to guess that um, that T-Rob is basically coaching your defensive backs um, with DeMarcus Van Dyke kind of as his assistant, if you will, uh, you know, learning from him and, and, and getting from him. But this is about recruiting. This isn't about DeMarcus Van Dyke or Mike Rumpf as coaches. This is strictly about um, rules and regulations as far as recruiting goes. They needed to promote DeMarcus Van Dyke to an on-the-field assistant for him to have more, more of his hands. You only have two. I don't, I don't know what that really means. On, on the recruiting. Um, is it a demotion for Mike Rumpf? Of course. When you're, you know, you're not an on-the-field assistant. But um, I, I see what Manny's doing here, and, and I want to talk about the bigger picture. Um, so... And the other move is is Bob Shoup comes in, and anytime you get, you get a guy that has been a defensive coordinator um, that has uh, been around the game of college football for as long as the Shoup brothers, him and his brother John, have been, um, it's it's a great addition to the program. And he's an off the field analyst. Let me let me just talk about that. So basically, let me use Alabama because I have first hand knowledge. Um, and I've told the story a million times. Um, I know, I know guys that work at Alabama now I've known more over the years, uh, just through different relationships that I've had in college football throughout my travels and 25 years covering the game. And, you know, Alabama has a billion guys. Okay. That's a little bit of an, uh, you know, just a tiny bit of an exaggeration, but They've just got a billion guys that on game day are wearing khakis and that polo shirt and you have that and they're just walking around and you're like, who are those guys? And those are the analysts. Those are the off the field analysts and they're getting paid a a ton of money, uh, relatively speaking, at Alabama compared to other places. But Nick Saban knows that you don't get it done. You don't just get it done. You don't win the amount of championships they've won. With, you know, the uh, the number of assistants the NCAA, NCAA allows you and, you know, the head coach. You need off the field guys to uh, to help in the film watching, in the teaching, in practice, in uh, recruiting, in a lot of the jobs that maybe don't you don't see on game day. Um, and they've had their share of name guys over the years at Alabama who have served in that role. And it's basically a way through using the NCAA guidelines and rules and regulations to have extra coaches, right? But they're just not theoretically coaching on game day, although if you look in on on the if you if you study tape of any college football game, anytime they go to the coach's box, you know, like where the coordinator sits or the assistant coach sits, you'll start to notice there's some of those analysts in the coaching box. But wait a minute, I thought they weren't coaching on game day. Well, they're just serving in analyst functions, whatever that may be. 
Um, it's it's really a way to have extra coaches, uh, but not call them coaches. And so what Manny is doing is looking around this, the the world of college football and understanding um, this is this is where you get an advantage is having guys that aren't quote unquote coaches but are quote unquote coaches following following so we're gonna have analysts so we have Mike Rumpf a guy that you know knows defense and he's an analyst right he's a recruiting person but guarantee you he will be around on game day um. Uh, helping out. And then we have uh, Todd Stroud, who's moved up, you know, to an administrative role. And he's another, you know, analyst, helper, another set of eyes, right? Um, And then we have, now we have Bob Shoup to be in the same position. Um, A guy that's going to sit in the, in the, in the back room, um, not only helping Manny, uh, you know, whether it's on game day or every day but game day, but also we'll be able to uh, give Manny another set of eyes on working ahead on opponents, self-scouting, all of the stuff that in the NFL they have 458 people doing, but in college you just you can't have that many, but he'll be serving in that role. So I think that's a... Um, I think that's going to be a plus. So to have extra, and then let's not even forget about uh, Ed Reed, who's been serving in that row role, right, as another set of eyes for Manny. So you're starting to add names and people um, into the the shadows of the college football analyst role on the staff, and it's only going to help. So um, listen, I don't know how long Mike Rumpf will want to stay here. Uh, at, in that role of recruiter, a guy that Manny said, yeah, Mike's great at taking the parents around campus, the same campus he went to school on, all that stuff, and he's great in, in that set of re, of talking to the families of, of that part of recruiting, but DeMarcus Van Dyke is the closer, um, and, and that's fine. Um, I just think as a collective unit, you're only going to get better the more guys you have um, walking around in the shadows that can help out in either fixing problems with coaching or recruiting or looking at tape or self-scouting, all of that stuff. And now Manny has a bunch of them on defense and he's going to be in charge of the defense. So I, the, what I, what I think this is all going to come down to is um, having a better team, a better staff on that side of the football, which is going to bring that side of the football back to where it should be as a stifling defense. I think, Man, he said it yesterday that Rhett Lashley's got things down on his offensive side of the football. Whatever uh, system Rhett uses to game plan and call plays and use his assistance, that's working. And Manny wanted to, to, to get his system in place on the defensive side of the football um, with, with every bit of, um, let's call it cash flow. I mean, they're, they're paying guys who are not on the field coaches to serve in, in roles. Um, so that's kind of a sign to me that the University of Miami is willing to use its money um, that it has. People don't think the University of Miami has money. The University of Miami has plenty of money. Uh, as I said in the last video, go look at the fountains down at the medical school. They have all the money in the world. It's just a matter of how it's allocated. This is a sign to me that Manny asked for a chunk of change and got it to be able to have all these guys around. So that's a good, you should be, you should be, you should feel good about, about these moves for the University of Miami. I think it's going to be a team that, yeah, personnel, recruiting, getting the guys in there, uh, that can play football up to the University of Miami standards are going to be, is going to be important, but having the staff to get them there, uh, once they're on campus is equally important. Game planning is important. Um, bleep, not giving up 8,000 yards of rushing to North Carolina is going to be important. And I think um, while we're not building a staff for one game, uh, this is certainly going to help in that area. And also there's a little game against Alabama to start off the season, and you might want to have all hands on deck, and I think now they do. So there you go. Um, I, um, I like all the moves. I like all the moves. I, I owe Manny an apology. Uh, for that last video I did on the defense, which if you scroll 
I don't know if it's this way or this way, depending on how you're looking at your computer or your phone or what have you. Uh, you'll certainly find me ripping the crap out of him for not firing Blake Baker. He found Blake Baker a job at LSU, and uh, here we are with with a brand new, mostly coaching staff on defense. So props to Manny for that. I really give him credit. Um, did the same thing with the offense last year, and I think um, I think he knows. I I think Manny's going to turn out to be a pretty good head coach because again. He develops a plan. He knows what he needs needs to get done in the offseason, and he gets it done, and that's really important. All right, that'll do it for me. Please, again, subscribe, share, watch all that stuff. Hit the, uh, the thumbs-up button. That'll be really important, and I will see you when I see you. Go Canes.